As emulators have gotten better and better, they've also gotten a little more user friendly and even a little prettier. All my favorite emulators basically look like this. This is PS1 and this is GameCube and Wii. And then you have the Xbox 360 emulator. It's uh, a little ugly. But wait, I have one simple trick to fix this and add a ton of functionality to it that I'm gonna tell you all about after the intro. So here is a nice little manager for the emulator that, as you can see in their own words, it's a tool that tries to make using it easier. And it definitely does. Let me go ahead and open it up and run you through it. Welcome to the Xenia Manager. Whenever you first open it up, it's going to look a little something like this. There's two things that are probably a little different. For one, I've added a theme to this. And for two, this is going to say install for both of these instead of uninstall. I actually have grabbed both of the newest versions of these from the Xenia Manager because I'll very quickly show you. Here's the themes, by the way. It by default, I think ships with a light and it's really bright. And then there's actually a selector. So if you need to use one build over the other for whatever reason, you can just pop in and do that. And it's super easy. Now let's go ahead and actually go through the Xenia manager. Let's look at something cool. Like, I don't know, playing a game. We'll go to home and then we can add a game see right here I have Red Dead Redemption and then I'll ask you which version of Xenia you want to go ahead and by default use this is the game of the year which should be the Undead Nightmare collection so I'll click on that and look at that you know maybe I would have rather swapped it actually I wonder if I can so I just went ahead and removed the game and then added it back in it took like 10 seconds maybe I did that specifically because I want to add the second one. And now I have the ability to distinguish between the two of them, which is pretty nice. So we have the games here. What can we do? Well, I could just go ahead and click on it and it does boot right up. I don't know what the default settings on this are and if they're any good or not. It looks like I'm running in uh, DirectX 12, but it's moving. We're doing things. Now, if you do want to mess with your settings, you can, of course, go into Xenia settings. This is our default profile. But if you want to get a little more specific, you can actually open up your game profiles right here and you can go ahead and make whatever changes you want. So if one of these, I don't know, has problems running at a higher resolution because there's, I don't know, oh man, the zombies are super taxing on your GPU for whatever reason. Now you can do that. And that's the cool thing about this, having the two different discs and the different names. And the cool thing is if you're going through this and you're looking at these settings, you're like, you know, I'm not really sure what I should be doing here. Like, yeah, I probably want to put on full screen, but what resolution do I want? How does the game work with this or that? If we go back to home, you can actually right click on the game and open up the compatibility page right in the Xenia manager. And here we are, Red Dead Redemption Game of the Year Edition. Perfectly playable from start to finish base game. And then they show the proof, which is funny. I don't really see people do that. Very rarely can crash. FPS seems more stable when V-Sync equals false. See here. And then it links to more information about it. Cutscenes are heavy on performance. Undead Nightmare is more demanding due to the large amount of zombies. That, that's what I'm saying. I didn't read this yet, by the way, whenever I said that. And then, ooh, some screenshots. These look really nice. And then some of the issues, lens flare is visible through geometry. That's slightly weird, but that's not too bad. Shiny objects are visible through geometry. Yeah, I mean, again, that's, that's pretty tame. That is not game breaking for me at all. Upscaling issues during the night, whole screen or roads lit up, broken bloom. I mean, this looks like the night. It doesn't look weird. What is this? <laughs> okay. It's almost some like night vision kind of thing or something. As long as it doesn't pop in and out. I mean, that, that really doesn't bother me either. Okay. So I know that I'm good to move forward with this and that I'm going to be playing it. So next up, normally what I would recommend is to install whatever title updates are available for the game. And if you have the baseline of Red Dead Redemption, you will have title updates, but I actually don't think game of the year does. So we can go ahead and go into game patches. Do you have the patches locally downloaded? No. 
Oh, it'll go ahead and it'll show you what's out there. And this is what I was saying right here. TU9, that's title update nine. So if you have the original game and if you want to play it on the original or if you want to play it on title update nine, those are two separate entities. Whereas all the other ones don't have the title update because, you know, they came out so late. They already integrated the fixes from the title update just into the game itself. So this is disc one. We're going to pick disc one. And the patch has been installed. Now, if they didn't automatically pop up for you, and if you didn't automatically get the cover art, that means Xenia doesn't know what you have going on here. You may need to try changing the name of the file, but there is a way to manually do this, and I'll show you that. On GitHub, Xenia has a thing called game-patches, and you can scroll through here, and it says, hey, you need this version of Xenia, and you can download this zip file. And then all you have to do inside the zip file, there's a folder called patches and it has a bunch of files in it. You just drag it into your Xenia where the folder patches is. And then whenever you go into here and you click to install the game patch, it'll just ask you where you have the file and you're good. So now that we have the patch enabled, what is the patch? What does that even mean? What does that do? Well, if we go ahead and go to patch settings, you can see right here what we can do. We can do a lot for Red Dead in particular. We can unlock the FPS, we can disable depth of field and motion blur, turn up the anastrophic filtering, disable the sun flare. That was an issue, remember? Oh, and they give little tool tips too. They tell you what it is if you hover over it. So like, let me hover over unlock FPS. Does that have a description? Increases V-Sync target to 60 FPS. Now let's test out those per game settings. So I'm gonna go into Xenia settings. I'm going to pick Red Dead Redemption, and I'm going to tell it that I want it to go into full screen. And I'm gonna hit save. But then I'm gonna tell it not to go into full screen for Undead Nightmare. And we'll make sure that the settings are actually working. Uh-oh, I double clicked. Uh there we are, we're in the game. I mean, the title menu, but it's a rendering graphics. We're basically in the game. And now let's try out Undead Nightmare. Hey, what do you know? It works just like the other one did. So to be able to set up our game and our patches and our settings, we need to have a little bit of information. The first that I'm gonna go over is the actual default settings. So by default, the internal display resolution is 1280 by 720. And the reason for that is because this little note right here allows games that support different resolutions to be rendered in specific resolution. Note, the game has to actually support the resolution of this to work. 720p will work in pretty much every game. So the way that the Xbox 360 worked is a lot of games kind of display in 720, but aren't actually rendering in 720. And I will go back to the Red Dead patches. You can see right here, we have three different settings, 360p mode, 480, and 540. And what are these? Why would you select them? This renders the game internally at 360p and upscales to 720. This renders at 480p and upscales to 720. And this renders at 540p upscales to 720 and increases multi-sample anti-aliasing from two to four. All of these are ending up at the very end of this little chain going to 720p, but the higher resolution your initial image is, the better that 720p is gonna look. And this right here is exactly what I'm talking about right now. You can see I have three different screens. We have 360 mode, 480 mode, and 540 mode. And all these are rendering at 720p. I haven't messed with anything else. At some moments during this, I feel like it's fairly obvious which parts are the higher resolution. Like you can really pick out some things in the image like little jaggies, for example. But in motion, they do blend a little bit. But when I change the framing and I take them out of motion, you can see even though there's a small difference in the resolution, now the visual difference is a lot more pronounced. But we can take it way further than this. And that's because we can scale the rendering resolution. If you have sensitive eyes, look away for a second. If you try to scale the resolution on 360 or 480, 
you're going to get various amounts of flickering and weirdness and if you already are wanting to go for these air quote lower performance things anyway just go to 540 i i don't think right now there's any point in trying to do this all right sensitivized you can come back we are now in the xenia manager again we're looking at our red dead redemption settings because there's one big thing that i talked about a little bit but i haven't shown you how to do yet it's draw resolution scale but what this is is integer pixel width scale it scales the resolution of the game and they lay out examples for us which is nice so they're assuming our default is 720p which it is so if you do it at 2 it does double the resolution from 720 to 1440 and then 3 it goes all the way up to 4k these are the different scalings for 540 we have one time which you've already seen two time and three times now you could look at this as it's scaling 540 so it would go 540 1080 and then 1260 or since it's 540 to 720 already you could think of it as 720 1440 2160 i'm not really gonna argue which way it is if you if you have a favorite you can tell me all about it but as you can see i just have 1x 2x and 3x and there's a pretty big difference between these this is where you really get into the visual quality and also you start killing your fps depending on your computer now i did go ahead and play this a little bit on my own i am taking the middle ground of those last settings that we looked at that being 540 times two and i had a pretty good time with it i didn't really have any issues or anything just like i hope you had a good time with this video if there are any long time users of the emulator i would love to get your thoughts on this project i'll have the github linked below it seems really useful and i think it's really new too so if you're watching this video and it's been a little while check the upload date there might be a bunch of new features added to it and if any of those are substantial guys please let me know if you want to see me cover some of that stuff and i will be happy to at least dig into it just like i would be happy if you hit the subscribe button and left a like i plan on posting I have some other emulator videos coming out soon that you don't want to miss out on and I hope to see you then. But until then, take care and goodbye.